Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, oh, all the way. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another day. You've let the sun come out after such a stormy night. And our lives are the same way, Lord. You always let the sun come out. And I thank you, Lord, for even we seeing just a light at the end of the tunnel, even with the COVID. We ask you to continue to bring us through this. You bless so many with the stimulus checks, with the unemployment, with the house uh, payments and rent payments. We thank you, God, for your sustaining, your sustaining power. No matter what come, you said the enemy would come in like a flood. But the Spirit of the Lord would lift up a standard against them. You said no weapon form would prosper. And you've proved that, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you for everything, not some things, small things or big things, but everything. Because we're nothing without you. We could not make it without you. You're our breath. We thank you, Lord, and ask you to look on the ones in the hospitals, the sanitary, nursing homes, foster care, orphanage, prisons, everyone, Lord. The people in sex trafficking. Deliver. Oh, God, the prostitute, deliver. The gangbangers, deliver, Lord. Save them. Let them know it's a better life. Some strung out on drugs, Lord, deliver. Some in abusive marriage, deliver. You're a strong deliverer. And we can run into you and find safety in the time of storm. We ask you to look on our country, our world, our churches, the president, the vice president, all the leaders. In the uh, world, we ask for unity and peace. Lord, the war-torn areas, the war areas where they are taking food from the little hungry children. Lord, help, help. Nobody can but you. It's bigger than us. We look to you to author and the finish of our faith. And we'll give you all the praise and glory for all that you've done. Word my lips today that I speak only what you have me to say. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hello and holy greetings. This is the Still Small Voice, and I'm Fran Shaw, your friend in Christ. We thank God for being with you another time. It's just a blessing. Our thought for this month will be following at a distance, Following at a distance. I always like to do a definition of our words first. So following is what follows. It equals what follows. What comes next. And uh, ensuing or coming after. Distance is the amount of space between two things or people. To withdraw or detach. If you're walking behind someone... You can follow closely or you can follow at a distance. Today we are referring to following Jesus. Recall I sang song earlier, uh, where you lead, I will follow. I'll follow all the way. That means I won't just follow Jesus when it's popular, convenient, glamorous, good, easy. I'll follow him in the good time and the bad. When Jesus began his ministry, he chose 12 disciples. He handpicked them. In Matthew 4 and 18 through 20, uh, now Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers. Simon, was called, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. They were casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. They did not question or make excuse. They put down their nets and followed Christ. They, along with ten other 
chosen of Christ, of Jesus, followed him closely during his three years of ministry. Their association with Jesus was glamour, glory, excuse me, in that it was an honor to be chosen. They ate with Christ, slept with him, heard him teach, uh, saw miracles Jesus performed. They gained strength, wisdom, and power with him from being with Jesus, closely with Jesus. It was not always easy being with Jesus. Jesus told us, strive in Matthew 8, 19 through 20. Foxes have holes. Birds have of the air have nests. But the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. Jesus didn't have a house. Uh, Jesus owned no house. Mark 8. Chapter 8, verse 34 through 37 says, And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wish to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whosoever wishes to save his life will lose it, and whosoever loses his life will save it. For my sake and the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Bold Peter, bold Peter, the outspoken disciple, quick spoken, quick reacting Peter, said to Jesus in Mark 10, verse 28 through 31, Behold, we have left everything to follow you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, brother, father, mother, sister, or forms, children, or forms, for my sake and the gospel's sake, will not receive it a hundred times in this present age. And much, as much now in this present age, houses, brothers, sisters, mother, children, and farms, along with persecution. In the, and in the age to come, eternal life. Jesus was e uh, letting Peter and us know serving the Lord, following Jesus, will pay off in this world, however with some pain, and life eternal with him and the Father in heaven. Recall, we are talking about following at a distance. It's easy to follow Jesus close when there is no pain, no struggle, only happiness, a seat of honor, a big offering, a big name and popularity, no threat of harm or danger. But when things get tough, will you follow him? Jesus, will you follow him? We see in John chapter 6 and verse 2, people followed Jesus because of the miracles he did among them. Then in verse 26, they were still following him, even across the sea they followed, after he had fed the 5,000 with the two fish and five loaves of bread. They kept following him. Jesus said to them, Ye seek me not because you saw miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and the fish and were filled. They first followed him for miracles of healing and deliverance. But after eating the delicious fish and bread, they followed him for free food. Are we following Jesus for what? He will give us of what he will do for us. Are we following him for what the goody? Jesus told them, I am the bread of life, the living bread. He that comes to me will never hunger, and he that believe in me will never thirst. Jesus told them, whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, will have eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. 
Jesus was referring to his death on the cross, his resurrection, salvation, and eternal life. John 6, 6 and verse 6, it says, Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this saying, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? They turned and walked with Jesus no more. These were not the chosen 12 disciples. Jesus had many followers and other disciples. Luke chapter 10 will explain this to you with emphasis on verse 1 and verse 17. He had 70, 70 other disciples and he sent them to spread the gospel and to heal the sick and cast out demons. After these 70 or, or ever how many turn their backs on Jesus and on the ministry. He turned to his 12, the 12 he had handpicked, and asked, will you leave me too? Then in John 6 and 68, our bold Peter said, Lord, to who shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Spirit has shown this to Peter, our bold Peter. You remember our thought now is following at a distance. The same Peter, after saying this, he also told Jesus at the Last Supper, Luke 22, Peter says, Lord, I am ready. I am ready to go with you not only, rep, but I'm, not, I'm willing to go with you or rather to follow you to prison and even to death. Jesus told Peter, you will deny me before today's out. Before the, the rooster crow three times, you're going to deny me. You know the story, how it went. Judas betrayed Christ. And Peter, bold Peter, cut off this ear of the guard. Now we see in chapter two, uh, Luke 22, verse 54 through 62, they took Jesus after Judas had kissed him and brought him to the high priest's house. And our bold Peter followed afar off. Mm, mm, mm. Followed at a distance. The bold Peter that's going to go to prison, going to go to death, was falling at a distance. He sat in a crowd around the fire near the priest's house, outside of the high priest's house, and was identified by a damsel as being one of the Christ followers, one of the disciples. Are you sitting in a crowd with the wrong people, in the wrong crowd, in the bar, in the strip bar, in the, in the dance halls. Are you sitting in the wrong crowd at a party, a wild party? Are you sitting in the wrong crowd? Peter was sitting in the wrong crowd, warming itself, trying to see what was happening, but falling at a distance. The bold Peter who told Christ, a few hours ago, I will follow you to prison and to death. Is denying Jesus. He said, I don't know it. I'm not, I'm not one of them. He was telling the lady, I don't know him. My, my. Someone else said a little later, said to Peter, this man, I am, uh, this man was with Christ. He's one of them. Peter said, for the second time. No, I'm not with him. Then an hour later, a third person said, I'm sure, I'm sure that he's one of them. And he said, no, I tell you for sure, I don't know him. He denied him three times. Where the rooster crowed, just like Jesus said. And Peter remembered, Jesus said, I would deny him. He wept and cried. 
And even over in Matthew 26, verse 74, Peter cursed. He, You know, Jesus' people don't curse. If you curse it, you follow it at a distance. Jesus' people didn't curse. And Peter going to make sure these people know I'm not with him. He cursed and said, I swear I don't know him. I don't know him. But he said he was going to death, to uh, prison and death. He disowned Jesus. He wanted no association with him for fear of punishment or maybe even death. Like Peter, we can be found following at a distance when we feel that God is not in control and we let fear cause us to believe that Satan is winning in our lives. Peter was heartbroken that Jesus was arrested. He loved Jesus. He, he, he had forgotten that Jesus had told them, I'm going to suffer unto death. And, but I will be, I will rise in three days. I'll rise from the dead. He forgot it. He thought that everything that was good and life changing had come to an end. We like Peter, if we don't follow Jesus closely, we will deny him too. Like Peter, our faith will be rattled. And things appear to be dark and defeated. When we follow at a distance like Peter, we will like assurance of the promises we have and the benefits we have in serving Christ. Physically, naturally, so when we are at a distance from someone, we can't see them. We can't hear them, nor for sure we cannot touch them, and they cannot touch us. So let's follow Christ closely so that we won't be afraid, that we can see him, that we can hear him, and that we can touch Christ. When we follow at a distance like Peter, we hurt Jesus. Yes, Jesus was hurt, and he knew he knows everything. Nothing is hid. He knows that we're falling at a distance. We like a relationship. To have a close relationship with Christ, we must be close enough to have a conversation with him. The more you talk to a person, and yes, the more you talk to Jesus, the more you're going to know about him. You won't get to know Jesus following at a distance. Up close, we can tell what his will is for us and his plan is for our lives. Notice Peter, notice this. Peter was unhappy following at a distance. We too will be unhappy following at a distance. Just going to church once a week is not enough. Are you following at a distance? You are following at a distance. Are you fasting, praying, reading your Bible, witnessing? Our words may acknowledge Jesus, but our actions deny him. Are you saying you with him and your actions de de uh, deny him? Or are you doing both? No word and no action. Are we witnessing, telling others about Christ? Are you loving others? Are you obeying Christ, keeping his Ten Commandments? Are you uh, sacrificially giving of yourself and your resources? Are you bearing much fruit? You remember in, uh, John 15, it said, bear much fruit. He wants us to bear much fruit. That's the fruit of the spirit and souls for the kingdom. Are you keeping yourself unspotted from the world? Do you look like a Christian? DNA is strong. There should be some resemblance there. When Jesus called us to follow him, 
He called us to follow him closely, to fully follow him. In good and bad times, happy or sad times, in sun and rain, we are to follow him. Not just when it's easy. If you have been following at a distance and denying Jesus, like with Peter, Jesus still loves you. He loves you. He loves me. And he will give us a second chance, just like he did Peter. He restored Peter in John chapter 21, verse 15 through 19. Remember, he kept saying, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, I do. And he said, well, feed my sheep. Jesus said, I tell you, excuse me, this was in Matthew uh, chapter 16 and 18. Chapter 16, verse 18. This is where he told Peter earlier. He said, you are Peter. You are Peter. And on this rock will I build my church. Peter was that rock and was instrumental in building the church after Christ's death. So let us follow closely, passionately pursue Jesus. Let us get closer to Jesus than we've ever been before. In times like this, it's time to go deeper, closer to Jesus. The more of you, Lord, the more of you in our life, the more of you in our heart, the more of you in us, Lord. Oh, the more of you. Fill us up with you. Let us follow no more at a distance. Follow no more at a distance, people. We must own him wherever we go. We must own him in action, in deed, and in word. In deed, action, and word. We must own him. No more following at a distance. No more following at a distance. Let's come closer to the Lord. I thank you and I pray something I've said today has encouraged you. It first comes to me. I'm not just saying it to you. The Lord is speaking to all of us. Thank you for listening today and uh, may God bless you until we meet again. God bless.